Aha! I see what you did there, Dragon Ball Super. Bringing us back to the good old days of Dragon Ball Z where Gohan and Piccolo were training. But to talk about this episode more itself, alrighty guys, it is Qua Man here today bringing you my episode 88 review of Dragon Ball Super. And we're going to talk about the good, the bad, some interesting discussion points, and my overall thoughts on the episode and the preview itself. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into this video. So, talking about the good stuff first, I think this episode did a phenomenal job with musical choice and when we see gohan with piccolo at the beginning of the episode sparring with each other the tranquil music that plays in the background felt very fitting for a casual training sequence that wasn't about a fight that's you know about a galactic battle that's gonna you know decide the universe it felt like a battle where you're pushing yourself and testing yourself and that's the vibe I got from it, and I definitely want to use that song in the future for all of my Dragon Ball related videos because I felt that song was really good. And all the other songs that they used was just very on point for this episode, so the music is definitely a thumbs up. And one thing that I noticed is I got a little bit of a future Gohan vibe in this episode. Now, in terms of the plot and the characters themselves, future Gohan has nothing to do with what went on. But seeing Gohan in the rain with the water falling on him, you know, training with Piccolo, it just gave me a future Gohan vibe, especially with the Super Saiyan, you know, with that short haircut. It just gave me a future Gohan vibe, and I just want to know if you guys kind of got that feeling too. I probably am weird and maybe the only person who felt that way, but I just felt like mentioning that. Now, one really good thing I liked about this episode is it did something very cool when it pertains to the family atmosphere. It gave you a very good family friendly vibe in it as we see Bulla as a baby, Goten and Trunks taking care of her, and we also see Super Vegeta to the rescue as the super dad of the year as he's putting on her diapers. And the really cool thing is Vegeta's like smiling about it, like he's happy to be taking care of his daughter. And this is obviously a massive transition from what we saw earlier in Dragon Ball Z where, you know, Vegeta didn't give a fuck about baby trunks, but now he cares a lot about bullets. So this really shows the transition in Vegeta's character. And I really like the fact that we see Bulma on the phone, you know, talking to somebody. It could be anybody. It could be possibly tights. It could be anybody. You're talking to her, one of her friends about, you know, Bulla being so cute and how she's going to grow up to be beautiful like her. And that made you feel like Dragon Ball was very realistic in a way. It felt like this is a realistic casual conversation that Bulma would be having on the phone in real life. It really brought the characters to life and I really enjoyed that specific scene itself. And it was also good to see, you know, Trunks and Goten kind of being like the big brothers to Bulla as obviously Goten would be kind of brother-like to Bulla in the future as well. So those are some interesting points there. Now, in terms of humor, I really enjoyed a scene that we got to later on where we see Krillin training with Android 18 and, you know, Marin's watching her parents sparring with each other. 18 knocks Krillin's ass down <laughs> and Krillin literally gets up and he says, Yay, why don't you go easier on me? But I'm sitting here thinking to myself, in terms of power, it's like your wife could like wipe you out so easily. I mean, this woman managed to wipe out a Super Saiyan Vegeta when his ego was over 9,000 and he also wiped she also wiped out like future Trunks easily as well so she wiped out Trunks and Vegeta with no problem as Super Saiyans and she's dealing with your little piddly self and, and you have the audacity to say go easy on me like how much do you want AT to go out on you I don't know that that was a funny scene for me it was silly but it was just cool seeing how Krillin wants her to hold back and when we go back to the fight between Gohan and Piccolo th the scene afterwards where we see Piccolo training with Gohan to me really highlighted this episode where Piccolo gives Gohan a speech we learned earlier in the episode that Goku wanted Piccolo to train with Gohan because he felt that Piccolo could help bring it out of him and obviously Goku's kind of busy trying to recruit everybody around too but it was really interesting to see Piccolo telling Gohan that you need to be more focused on the objectives and you can't be thinking too much about trying to protect people and 
being focused solely on winning because you're going to lose your focus and you have to focus more on the objectives and you know wishing to protect too much is also a bad thing and i felt that that was really good because it's realistic let's use a sports analogy if you're losing in a basketball game or a football game and then all of a sudden you have no hope in yourself and you just start shooting three pointers because you're losing or just throwing hail mary passes those are bad moves that you're using a smart team would be trying their best to get back into the game the smart way and the right way instead of just forcing bad shots or you know bad plays in football and that's kind of what i thought about when i saw piccolo you know telling gohan that like it was a very realistic thing and it really shows you that gohan has mental blocks that prevent his power from really coming out and also i was talking to geek them about this too it's really interesting to see that gohan training with piccolo is very different from what it was with goku because if you guys remember back in the day when gohan was training with goku in the hyperbolic time chamber Gohan was getting irritated with Goku because he felt Goku was going too easy on him and he wanted Goku to be rougher on him the way Piccolo was. Don't make a sexual joke on that, guys. You know what I mean. You know, he wanted Goku to be rougher on him, you know, because he wanted to really maximize his abilities. And I feel like, you know, this episode brought it back because sometimes you need that alpha disciplinarian instructor to really bring the most out of you. So those are some really interesting points. Now, the episode cuts into following up with Kaba and I really like that about Dragon Ball Super in this episode where they did a pretty solid job of mixing in relevant scenes with the main focus of the episode being Gohan and Piccolo like I felt like that was cool to see you know Kaba going over to see Captain Renzo to try and recruit him to fight with the tournament of power fighters for universe 6 and Renzo has a busted leg and he actually wanted Kaba to go fight with cauliflower who is female broly as we've seen so far and i saw the image of cauliflower leaked on twitter i wasn't 100 percent sure if it was going to be in this episode people were saying it was going to be leaked for this one i wasn't 100 percent sure and i said i want to see it before i make a statement about it but cauliflower was pretty much confirmed in this episode and we don't only really see her for about 10 seconds as she's eating something. But it's interesting to see that Kaba is a Super Saiyan and nobody really knew anything about Super Saiyans in Universe 6. But Kali Kaba became the Super Saiyan, you know, obviously for Universe 6. And to me, if Cauliflower is, you know, this legendary Super Saiyan character, you would think that she's probably a well-trained Super Saiyan and can probably bring this out herself. And it shouldn't have been so surprising for people to see Kaba as a Super Saiyan if she can potentially turn Super Saiyan as well. So that was a little bit of a conflict I had, but obviously it could just be something natural that she brings out or maybe she was hiding it. We'll have to find out, but that was a little bit of a conflict I had with that moment there. But it was good to bring universe 6 back into the picture and to talk more about gohan versus piccolo the last training sequence we see that was really cool was piccolo is mopping the floor with gohan he's kicking his ass and gohan struggling he literally has all the stretchy armstrongs you know arms like holding gohan back gohan's so shocked with piccolo's power he's like how'd you get so strong and piccolo's like what do you think i've been sitting on my ass where you've been training while you've been studying all these years i really like that because it really shows you that piccolo has improved in power piccolo's way stronger than i expected if he's fighting gohan in this level and as piccolo continues to talk to gohan you realize that Gohan's mental blocks are gone. Piccolo tells him, bring out the power that you used against Majin Buu. And Gohan goes into his mystic form. And I said to myself, okay, I'm kind of confused. When I first saw the episode, I was like, if Gohan could barely turn Super Saiyan in Resurrection of F, but could just simply turn into his ultimate Gohan form with a little bit of prep talk, I felt kind of bummed out about that. But when I saw the episode again, I'm like, no, Gohan is like a light bulb, you know, where the, all of the energy is in the light bulb. You just have to figure out how to turn the switch on. And it kind of felt fitting that Piccolo of all people would know how to turn that light switch on itself. And that's when I kind of went back and I saw it. I'm like, no, this isn't really unrealistic. Gohan had the power in him the whole time. He was just rusty and he didn't necessarily know how to use it. 
And I really like that when Gohan and Piccolo were fighting against each other, Gohan knocks off his arm in his ultimate Gohan form. And similar to what happened in the Buu arc, Gohan loses his guard, gets caught off guard, and Piccolo's broken arm shoots a blast at Gohan and injures him. You know, barely. I mean, it injures him in the sense that he does damage, but it doesn't really hurt him uh, that much, at least. And, you know, Piccolo still shows Gohan that, you know, he still needs more to do. And the fact that that blast did that much damage on Gohan means that Piccolo's clearly stronger than I expected. So... It shows that Gohan still has his flaws, he still can get caught off guard like his father. And I really loved all of the throwback elements that this episode managed to put all into one. And it was cool to see that even after, you know, Piccolo sparred with Gohan and, you know, he managed to help Gohan bring out all of his power once again, Piccolo still has faith that Gohan can bring out more. And Gohan wants to work with Piccolo into doing tag team attacks, which is what I've been doing with my five ways blank could win the tournament of power so really all of this stuff is showing that dragon ball super has a lot of hope if they're going to work on tag team attacks it's really showing that they're not going to just make this a brutal power speed brawl and they're really going to be creative with the fighting techniques and it gives me a lot of hope and the in the last two interesting things i wanted to point out that were really good about this episode were i love the throwback to the fire with gohan and piccolo going straight back to Gohan and Piccolo training for the Saiyan arc. And I also love the little scene at the end where we see Yamcha just wanting to be the star of it all and wanting Goku to come, you know, show up and ask him to, you know, join the tournament of power. So they added a lot of humor elements and I really like that. Now, for the bad parts of this episode, I only have two things. The first thing I wanted to say is, once again, Dragon Ball Super has been hiding this whole thing of the Tournament of Power is going to be, you know, devastating for the losing universe as all of their universe is pretty much going to be wiped out. Or lose losing universes, I should say. And it kind of annoyed me that Beerus and Whis are once again talking about this again with Bulma, how they don't want to tell her. But to me, it's like, I understand they're being peaceful and they just think it's going to be a casual thing. But... This is a serious fucking tournament. Like, I think people should be more concerned about this. I feel like you could bring out the most in people if you actually tell them what's at stake. Instead of just making it a casual thing going on. So, honestly there, guys, like, that was just something I kind of had a little bit of a problem with. They keep been doing this over and over again. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think it's a big deal? Do you think they should just flat out say, look, the fucking tournament's gonna wipe out all the universes that lose? Or do you think they should actually hide it? Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. And the other thing that I thought about is... Piccolo was saying, you know, we only, there was only about 20 hours left and Piccolo was saying, let's try to get stronger together. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, how strong can you really get in 20 hours? And if you really wanted to spar with Gohan, then why didn't you go into the hyperbolic time chamber room of spirit and time? I mean, the whole rule about going in more, you know, more than twice has been rewritten so much at this point. I mean, they've broken that rule so many times already now. So that's clearly out the window. Just go in the hyperbolic time chamber with Gohan. You would be in a stricter environment. Even if you're stronger, you could push your body more. You can get more out of the limited time you have left. And in essence, I think it can make Gohan way more prepared for the Tournament of Power coming up in just a small amount of time. And he could be even stronger than you could expect. So, really, those were the only two criticisms I had. I thought they should have just went into the Room of Spirit and Time. And I feel like they should just tell Bulma and everybody else at this point. Now, for some quick discussion points, guys. I want you guys to shoot back at me some of your thoughts on these points here. How strong do you guys think Piccolo is now? I know Dragon Ball is a show that we talk about power scaling a lot, but really, if Gohan's not as strong as he used to be, but at least somewhat close, if he can get his Mystic Gohan power back, it makes you wonder, Piccolo has to be above Boo and way stronger than we expected. Even going back to Dragon Ball Super, where we had like Piccolo versus Frost, I mean, he clearly has to be a lot stronger than we anticipated at this point. And if he's really that strong, then he shouldn't have struggled that much against Togoma, considering what Gotenks, you know, managed to do with just one headbutt. So, the power scaling is off, but unless Piccolo got that much stronger over the years, it can only make sense in that way. And also, 
What do you guys think about Gohan and what I was mentioning earlier with do you think it makes sense for Gohan to get his power back that easily? Or do you think Dragon Ball Super is just fast forwarding this way too much? I really want to get your thoughts because at first I was iffy about them just giving him ultimate Gohan right away. But then I thought about it. If the power is all in him, then all you need to do is turn on the switch. Let me know your thoughts on that. And overall for this episode, I thought it was good. I liked it. It had awesome music. And I wish they would explain more about Gohan being able to go straight back into Mystic. But other than that, I think Piccolo dialogue was extremely good in this episode it felt like you know the master you know is pretty much training his student but the students already stronger than the master the master's just bringing the most out of the student and i felt that that was a very 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 good thing to take us back to dragon ball z between gohan and piccolo and I don't think this was an amazing episode. It wasn't the best episode ever for Dragon Ball Super, but it was very good and I really enjoyed it. And I'll give it a solid four stars. Very good episode, Dragon Ball Super. It felt like useful filler and I enjoyed it. It didn't do anything spectacular, but it was just very good, solid and clean overall. So for my thoughts on the preview, the spoilers pretty much give this away, guys. But I'm just going to say this. The girl in the episode we're seeing that's going to be entering Tien's dojo, check Dragon Ball Super spoilers if you want it. I'm not going to say it if you don't, guys don't want to be spoiled, but it's out there. This girl is clearly not going to be good from what we see in the preview as she has a very sadistic look on her face as she's hiding. And obviously, why would that girl show up to that tournament with, you know, Tien and Master Roshi? If she wasn't up to no good because why would master roshi all of a sudden just start going haywire like it would obviously be related to that mysterious character so my prediction is she's bad and spoilers can tell you more so with everything else said guys this has been my review and my preview analysis for dragon ball super episode 88 and episode 89 let me know what you think in the comment section below and have a great day guys so please remember to rate comment and subscribe and adios amigos